No matter how many late night stops you make at Taco Bell, there's probably a lot you still don't know about the fast food chain. When you're hungry for a burrito supreme. From how the Doritos Locos Tacos was invented to some of the chain's zaniest promotions, these Taco Bell tidbits will have you hitting the drive through in no time. Welcome to Taco Bell. May I take your order? Yeah, a Taco Bell grande. At some point in the 1990s, you probably saw one of those Taco Bell commercials that featured a precious little chihuahua named Gidget, a $500 million advertising campaign all told. Yo quiero Taco Bell. Though the commercials aired constantly, they didn't actually increase sales. Ooh. In fact, it cost the company in more ways than one. In 2003, two men claimed they'd created the concept of the Taco Bell dog and sued the company for $42 million. Who wouldn't want to take credit for the concept? Sir, don't be silly. Drop the chalupa. I said, drop the chalupa. Put it down, man! Yeah, drop the chalupa. Taco Bell eventually settled the case out of court, and Gidget passed away in 2009, at the ripe old age of 15. Her trainer claimed the Taco Bell gig basically ruined her career, noting that, she was kind of typecast, so she never really got much work after that. That's not to say her career was completely derailed by the campaign. After all, Gidget also starred in Legally Blonde 2 in 2003, fearlessly playing Bruiser, a brave and challenging role for any pooch to tackle. All the signs were there, I just didn't see them. You know, most dogs like to chew your shoes, and Bruiser like to wear mine. Oh, and we should probably mention that Gidget also had a bit role in Beverly Hills Chihuahua. Honestly, a lot of actors would kill for that resume. You've heard of a bed and breakfast, so why can't the world have a Taco Bell hotel? The chain decided to give the zany idea a whirl, opening up The Bell, a Taco Bell hotel and resort from August 8th to August 12th, 2019. Talk about thinking outside the bun. The California oasis of Palm Springs plays host to Taco Bell's hotel and resort, The Bell. Guess who successfully nabbed a reservation, got to enjoy an ever-so-tiny Taco Bell-themed room. You'll notice every space has been curated with unique Taco Bell touches. The hotel, which usually operates as the V Palm Springs Resort, was decked out with Taco Bell memorabilia, a Taco Bell gift shop, and a Taco Bell nail salon. As one excited guest noted, It's everything. Like, it's Taco Bell in its whole fantasticness. Like, is that a word? I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> there was even a so-called happier hour that included Taco Bell snacks and cocktails for guests who were 21 and older. There was also a Mountain Dew Baja Blast Freeze Lounge to chill out in, dive in movies in the pool, and plenty of Taco Bell items to choose from when you ordered room service. Belinda was right, heaven is a place on Earth. There were only 70 rooms available at the resort. When Taco Bell opened up their reservations, they booked real fast. In fact, every room was reserved within two minutes. Basically, in the time it takes the average couch potato to wolf down a crunch wrap, the rooms were already sold. Here's hoping the chain revisits the idea one day, because every Taco Bell fanatic deserves a chance to experience the bell. But what to wear to such an event? These are wrappers for the Doritos Locos Tacos. When Taco Bell first introduced their now-famous Doritos Locos Tacos, they had no idea it would be such a hit. Mmm, I'm thinking about a neon orange meat-filled miracle taco wrapped in a nacho cheese Dorito shell. In the first 70 days following the product's launch, Taco Bell sold 100 million nacho cheese Doritos Locos Tacos. Clearly, all the testing and prototyping paid off. Not that it was always the easiest concept to wrap one's head around. So yeah, they're putting Doritos in the tacos. The hype was frankly hard to believe. So Allison, <laughs> can one delicious taco really save America? <laughs> I don't know if it's going to save America. I mean, what's the sodium content in that thing? Making the cheesy Doritos Loco shell took a lot of hard work. In fact, 40 different versions were tested before they settled on the final product. The Taco Bell food innovation team joined forces with Frito-Lay and came up with a simple idea that would change everything. Taco Bell wanted to make sure the shell had the signature cheesiness of a Dorito chip, but the taco shell needed to maintain its original texture, too. You see, the texture of a regular Doritos is too brittle and would break when stuffed with taco ingredients. Worker safety was another hurdle. Initially, blasting the taco shells with cheesy powder proved hazardous to employees. They'd inevitably inhale the stuff faster than you can inhale a Mexi Melt. That meant the company had to invent a totally new machine for seasoning the shell safely. It's beautiful. Well, all that hard work paid off. Over a billion Doritos Locos Tacos were sold during its first year on the menu. And they've since become a fast food legend. But times change, snacks change, advertising trends change. In 2018, the chain introduced nacho fries, 
And suddenly, Doritos Locos Tacos were no longer the most popular item on the menu. This kind of deliciousness doesn't just disappear. Where did you go? What if they were in a different space-time continuum? Another dimension? News outlets were quick to leap on the story. So it's basically just a french fry with a little bit of seasoning and it comes with the nacho cheese sauce you can dip it in. There are currently 15 Taco Bell restaurants in Alaska, but it's a huge state. So if you don't live near one of those locations, good luck getting that chalupa. That's why residents of the small town of Bethel, Alaska, were heartbroken after falling for a hoax in 2012. Reportedly, some diabolical trickster put up flyers around town, advertising that a new Taco Bell was opening in the area. Local residents were beside themselves when they learned it was all a prank, until the real Taco Bell came to the rescue. Well, it's time somebody delivered some good news. Taco Bell CEO Greg Cree told CNBC, if we can feed people in Afghanistan and Iraq, we can feed people in Bethel. Taco Bell delivered hundreds of pounds of food by helicopter, enough for the town to come together and indulge in 10,000 Doritos Locos Tacos. It wasn't an emergency, but it was a rapid response team, sort of. In 1989, Taco Bell and Batman proved to be a match made in marketing heaven. The fast food chain ran a summer promotion that involved giving away free plastic Batman collector cups, and the event broke records for Taco Bell's promotional tie-ins. Right now, at Taco Bell, you can collect free Batman cups, like a free Batmobile cup. How did it work? Easy. Customers who ordered a large drink would get one of the cups, just like that. Who are you? He's Batman. And Taco Bell's got him. Thanks to the promotion, one store told the Los Angeles Times that sales were up at least 25%. Another location claimed they went from selling 600 large drinks a day to 1,000 large drinks a day. That's a whole lot of Mountain Dew. To drum up excitement, Taco Bell restaurants were decorated with massive cardboard cutouts of a certain brooding superhero. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the campaign inspired some ravenous Batman enthusiasts to steal those cutouts. One company spokesperson told the Los Angeles Times, We're hoping maybe Batman himself will show up at the stores to rescue himself from overzealous fans. Over the years, there have been plenty of rumors about Taco Bell's beef. Pretty sure you, you know what you're paying for when you come to Taco Bell. If you want real beef, you probably go somewhere else. In the past, skeptics have claimed Taco Bell beef is made with everything from mealworms to grade D beef. How brutal. C. D. F. 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 But spoiler alert, grade D beef doesn't even exist. But that simple fact didn't stop a few intense lawsuits from making headlines. The lawsuit claimed that the meat filling used by Taco Bell was less than 35% beef. While Taco Bell's beef does come pre-cooked and in bags, the truth isn't particularly scandalous. It's actually 88% beef, and the other ingredients rounding out the recipe are all rather common. Yes, they do use some fillers derived from oats, and the meat is blended with soy lecithin, which is used to make sure the ingredients in beef don't separate. But all told, the list of ingredients isn't particularly shocking. In recent years, Taco Bell has been focusing on sourcing more of its beef from sustainable suppliers. That is, suppliers that are working to reduce the amount of antibiotics in their supply of beef. Taco Bell is known for meaty items like the Chipotle Chicken Loaded Griller and the Beefy Crunch Burrito. And these tasty snacks have earned the fast food chain a fervent following. If a Taco Bell burns down, you better believe there's going to be a vigil. Locals mourning the loss of their beloved Taco Bell. Always remember Taco Bell's El Road. We're just out here. You remember it. John, let's talk about what's going on. Like many fast food restaurants, the chain is looking to expand its fan base by offering an array of vegan and vegetarian options. Actually, Taco Bell has always been a pretty good option in that regard. You can sub out the meat in any menu item for beans, rice, or potatoes. And in 2019, Taco Bell made a corporate commitment to making its menu even more friendly to vegetarians and vegans. Right now, you can already choose 8 million vegetarian combinations at Taco Bell. As it says on the official website, that's enough to customize a new meal every day for nearly 20,000 years. The chain is also testing out its first official vegetarian menu. News that's really got people talking. The Taco Bell website even offers a handy guide to eating vegan at the restaurant that was created in partnership with the American Vegetarian Association. This guide will teach you how to make some of Taco Bell's classic menu items, dairy, and meat-free, including the Crunchwrap Supreme and the Soft Taco. Excitement about this new development is clearly contagious. Taco Bell has been offering vegetarian options since 2015, but this is the first time that the company will have the vegetarian menu highlighted in stores. Taco Bell was founded by entrepreneur Glenn Bell, whose first establishment sold hot dogs and hamburgers. 
That was Bell's Drive-In, which operated out of San Bernardino, California, beginning in 1948. Glenn eventually opened Taco Tia in 1954, where he sold hot dogs, hamburgers, and tacos. In fact, his chili dog recipe was the inspiration for Taco Bell's original taco sauce. He always had a passion for Mexican food. In a 1978 speech, Bell explained why he initially decided to operate out of San Bernardino. My plan for experimenting with tacos was to obtain a location in a Mexican neighborhood. That way, if tacos were successful, potential competitors would write it off to the location and assume that the idea wouldn't sell anywhere else. Bell eventually realized tacos should be his focus. He opened a restaurant called El Taco, later selling his shares and his Taco Tia locations, in order to open the first Taco Bell in 1962 in Downey, California. At the original Taco Bell, tacos and other Mexican-American favorites were the stars, and they sold for just 19 cents apiece. However, the restaurant kept serving burgers, in the form of chili burgers. The Bell Beefer was the last burger on the menu, and it was discontinued in the 90s. If you grew up thinking that all tacos came in a crunchy yellow shell that came out of an old El Paso kit, you aren't alone, but that version of the taco is a relatively new arrival on the scene. In fact, the crunchy preformed taco shell was actually invented by Taco Bell founder Glenn Bell in the early 60s. Bell was trying to figure out the best way to sell large amounts of tacos quickly, and that's when he came up with the preformed crunchy taco shell. These bad boys could be made ahead of time and kept at room temperature until needed. This was essential because Bell was trying to compete with McDonald's, another booming chain that was taking off in San Bernardino, California. Thanks to preformed taco shells, employees don't have to cook every single taco to order. They can just stuff the shell and sell. It's a brilliant business strategy, that is, until employees start licking taco shells for kicks. So the employee in that picture is suspended and will be fired. It's gross. It definitely is not good, but it doesn't surprise me. I think maybe it should uh, help these uh, corporations reflect on who they're hiring. The original Taco Bell restaurant, or Taco Bell Numero Uno, as the company calls it, ceased operations in 1986. However, even though the building was no longer an official Taco Bell restaurant, it was rented out to other taquerias until 2014, when it was abandoned for good. The powers that be at Taco Bell ultimately decided they couldn't let this piece of history get torn down. So what do you do when you can't stay somewhere? You pack up and you hit the road. The building was lifted off its foundation and transported to the company headquarters in Irvine, California. It definitely took a long trek to get here. 47 miles this building drove overnight on a flatbed truck. The journey took place on November 19, 2015, and the petite 400-square-foot building made it safely through the streets of Los Angeles to arrive at its new home. The chain hasn't said what they plan to do with Taco Bell Numero Uno, but at least they preserved an important piece of fast food history. We'll be sure to update this news story as more information becomes available. Back to you, Jason. I used to walk across Grand River to the Taco Bell at Collingwood, and I would get two steak soft tacos and a Cholito, a.k.a. the chili cheese burrito. The Taco Bell food you enjoy today is probably not the same grub you enjoyed in your younger years. The Bell has tried over the years to keep up with the latest fast food trends, but it doesn't always work out. Here's a look at some Taco Bell menu items that probably won't be coming back to the border. Yo quiero Taco Bell. BLT Soft Taco In 1995, when someone decided that bacon went on everything, Taco Bell gifted us the bacon, lettuce, and tomato taco. Well, you can make it exotic, you can make it friendly, you can even make it finger food. But if you're Taco Bell, you make it a taco. But from inconsistent bacon texture to ranch sauce that really felt out of place, this was a taste fail all around. Taco Bell brought back the BLT in a crunch wrap in 2014, but it didn't work out then either. Bacon Club Chalupa In 2008, Taco Bell gave bacon another whirl in the Bacon Club Chalupa. Do you smell bacon? Oh, yeah, it's a Bacon Club Chalupa. <laughs> Guys love bacon. Yes, everyone loves bacon, but there's one part of this sandwich taco hybrid that just about everyone agreed brought it down, the chewy chalupa shell. Everyone hated it when it wasn't fresh. The Bacon Club Chalupa returned for a very limited time in 2015, but it went away again because ultimately bacon doesn't belong at the bell. Extreme Nachos There was a time in fast food jargon when the word extreme described the use of red chips. Behold Taco Bell's Extreme Nachos. For an extreme summer, dip like this. Don't dip like this. But Extreme Nachos were just red nachos, and they were too gimmicky to ever last especially when they were listed next to the vastly superior Nachos Bel Grande on the menu. Seafood Salad Welcome to the wonderful world of Taco Bell's Seafood Salad. Fresh vegetables, tender bay shrimp, and a delicious blend of whitefish and snow crab. A refreshing change from anything on a bun. 
But if the idea of eating seafood at Taco Bell isn't appealing to you, congratulations! You share similar taste buds to the average 1980s customer. This salad simply didn't work at all. Enchirito The Enchirito is what happens when you combine a corn-shelled burrito and an enchilada. And people loved it! What's that? Oh, that is an Enchirito. Now that's got pinto beans, cheese on the top. The Enchirito first disappeared in 1993 and then returned in 1999, before disappearing again for good in 2013. The problem was that the new Enchirito was missing the golden shell, the three olives, and its handy foil container. It just wasn't the same. Chicken Caesar Grilled Stuffed Burrito Oh, where's the chicken Caesar salad for the party? I'm eating one right now! Taco Bell tried to take a salad and put it in a burrito, featuring chicken, romaine, Caesar sauce, and tortilla strips. You may get seized by Caesar. Guys, hello! The Caesar sauce never tasted fresh, and the lettuce was flimsy. But that didn't stop Taco Bell from testing it in a crunch wrap in 2016. It didn't make it onto the menu because no matter how great the crunch wrap is, putting a Caesar salad in it is a bad idea. The original breakfast. Taco Bell realized early on that people wanted tacos in the morning. Today they're eating waffle tacos, tomorrow they're loitering. In some areas of the country, Taco Bells were open 24 hours a day. And in the early 90s, way before the 2013 introduction of Taco Bell's breakfast, they took a stab at a full-on breakfast menu. Taco Bell has a whole breakfast menu, starting at just 39 cents. So, there's a reason you probably never heard of it until now. Not every location served breakfast, and they went heavy on the bacon. Never mind the rip-off egg McMuffin. Taco Bell's 90s breakfast venture didn't even make the company history page. But the internet never forgets. Everybody loves the taste. It's like a taco, taco Bell. A mysterious food called tacos. No drive through and no seating. And chili burgers on the menu? Taco Bell's come a long way since it first opened in 1962. Americans butchered the pronunciation of taco back in the 60s, often ordering a taco. It's taco! TACO! But they couldn't have known better. When Taco Bell was founded in Downey, California in 1962, tacos weren't as popular as other Mexican foods, such as tamales, enchiladas, and frijoles. According to the book Taco USA, How Mexican Food Conquered America, while other foods from Mexico crossed the border as early as the 1890s, tacos didn't break through until the 1950s, explains author Gustavo Arellano. There was a good chance that few Americans outside of California and Texas ever heard of tacos until Taco Bell rang its way into the rest of America. Arellano writes that even a decade after the first Taco Bell, Glenn Bell, the founder of the chain, traveled with the pronunciation guide and the chain's menu to places that hadn't heard of Taco Bell yet. There's ample seating in most Taco Bell locations today, but the very first unit was too small for people to sit and chat over a burrito. It was housed in a compact 20 by 20 foot space, Britannica notes. That's roughly enough space to park two cars. Customers were required to place their orders through a walk-up window, HuffPost adds. Though founder Glenn Bell had previously run restaurants that included drive throughs such as Bell's Drive-In in San Bernardino, and a drive through taco stand called Taco Tia, according to the Downey Patriot, the first Taco Bell didn't give customers the option to holler for their order from the comfort of their cars. The Institute of Culinary Education's website explains that walk-up windows were quite popular in Southern California in the late 40s and 50s, and what was thought to be an antiquated concept is making a comeback. The old-school style of serving customers a limited set of menu items through a window became popular with the need to distance socially during the COVID-19 pandemic. The New York Times notes that while the McDonald brothers were killing it with their hamburger business in San Bernardino, California in the 1950s, Taco Bell founder Glenn Bell opened his own burger stand a short distance away. Customers didn't share the excitement, and he was pushed to innovate. Bell didn't just change an item or two, but the entire menu. After seeing the buzz at the Mexican restaurant that his burger stand stood across from, Bell decided to start a taco stand. But he didn't stop there. When the time came to build the first Taco Bell restaurant, he wanted it to at least look authentic. According to the biography Taco Titan, Bell asked architect Robert McKay to make the structure look like buildings in Mexico. McKay designed a building in the mission style, which Love to Know explains was the style of the churches built by Spanish colonials between 1770s and 1820s. It features stucco walls, archways, and rooftops made with tiled bricks. 
Most Taco Bell locations look nothing like the first building now, but the chain still acknowledges its roots, noting, Taco Bell's architecture of the 60s and 70s remains as one of the most recognizable and iconic designs of the era. In 2016, Taco Bell did decide to bring back a modern twist of the mission style for some new stores, PenLive reported. I would like you to accompany me to Taco Bell. Look forward to it. Thank you. You couldn't get a chilled Baja blast at the first Taco Bell, but you might have been able to hear mariachis sing songs of old Mexico while you were chugging your root beer. A year after the launch of Taco Bell's first restaurant, Glenn Bell built a strip mall right next to it. Since the Taco Bell and the plaza were all part of the same complex, you could take your order of tostadas and sit at a table on the sidewalk or next to an open fire while listening to mariachi band's croon, a 1963 ad touted. KCET noted that the mall included open-air shops and HuffPost adds that it was built with a mission-style design similar to the first Taco Bell. One of the shops was a burger and hot dog stand run by the owners of the chain's Taco Quickie and Quickie Dog. The mall was advertised as a hub for Mexican food, entertainment, and curio shops featuring Mexican wares. An ad marked its festive opening saying, Old Mexico has come to Downey. Glenn Bell was set on making his tacos the talk of the town. Learning to fry the tortilla in hot oil was no biggie. What turned out to be harder was conceiving a way to make the process quick and easy. According to the book Taco USA, in the early 1950s, a chef in New York and another in Arizona had received patents for devices that fried several tortillas at once. Bell was probably unaware of these developments in his taco-verse, coming up with his own way of streamlining the taco-making process. The biography Taco Titan recounts that he reached out to a chicken coop producer to buy some chicken wire. He used the wire to weave baskets that would fry as many as six tortillas at a time. Once fried, instead of heaping them into a taco hill, he aligned them neatly on a taco trail so that he could pluck one off, stuff, and serve it in a jiffy. Today, you won't see Taco Bell staff frying tortillas in chicken wire baskets, of course. A Taco Bell manager explained on Reddit that the shells come pre-made and the staff just puts in the toppings. Today, Taco Bell's logo is a plain-looking white bell on a purple background, a design it adopted in 2016. This is a far cry from the original logo that showed a man in a sombrero sitting on a bell, and the building itself sported a design that looked like a bunch of colorful blocks left around carelessly by a toddler. Over the years, the Taco Bell logo, just like its menu, has undergone significant changes. From 1996 to 2016, the logo was a pink bell on a blue background. The bell had a yellow clapper that sparked a whole debate on Reddit about whether it was an ingenious design twist on an image of a taco. The Mellow Down 2016 logo allowed for easy customization for campaigns and promotions, according to AdAge. The creative agency Fabric Brands mentions on its website that in the mid to late 1980s, the bell was a lemon yellow color with a reddish orange background. If you trace the history of Taco Bell's logos further back, you'll find a monochrome design from the mid-1970s that was only lettering with no other design. Taco, 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 taco the first Taco Bell had a menu item that probably didn't fit its Mexican vibe, but was loved by its customers nonetheless the chili burger. It rested next to the tacos and tostadas on the chain's first ever menu, a delicious oddball. People who never visited the original location probably know it as the Bell Beefer, but it has been called by different names over the years. The chain's original menu had the chili burger, which was later called Bell Burger, according to News Nation, and then became Bell Beefer. The Bell Beefer was very similar to a sloppy joe, with ground spiced taco meat tucked in between two hamburger buns, along with tomatoes, onions, lettuce, and cheese. The popularity of Sloppy Joes, and likewise Bell Beefers, apparently slumped as the years went by, forcing the chain to remove it from the menu. But some customers really took a liking to them. A review on the Taco Bell Please Bring Back the Bell Beefer Facebook group proudly declares, the Bell Beefer was my favorite Taco Bell item back in the day. Hopefully, Taco Bell will bring it back. Unless you know what you really want, browsing through Taco Bell's menu is much like leafing through the pages of a magazine. There's a lot there, and it can take a big chunk of time. Plus, there is the big task of deciding whether to go for the pizza combo or a chalupa deluxe box, or whether to have a cinnamon twist or not. At the first Taco Bell, though, things were relatively simple. Right above the walk-up window was a menu board that featured a total of five items, according to News Nation. Frijoles, tostadas, chili burgers, red or green burritos, and tacos. 
Just to put things into perspective, the list is shorter than the number of menu items that the chain removed from its menu in 2020, which CNN noted was as many as 11. As for drinks, at the first Taco Bell, you could order a coffee, root beer, Coke, or orange juice. Today, there are a ton of other options, including a variety of freezes and sparkling iced tea. But you can't get Coke. PepsiCo bought Taco Bell in 1978, funding Universe Notes. In 1997, PepsiCo sold off its fast food division, which also included Kentucky Fried Chicken and Pizza Hut. The spun-off company eventually became Yum! Brands in 2002, and the restaurants have stayed loyal by serving only Pepsi products. No one under 25 drinks coffee anymore. Just Pepsi. Unless you're a coin collector, 19 cents won't get you much nowadays. But back in the summer of 1962, 19 cents could buy you a whole chili burger, a burrito, or any of the other menu items at the first Taco Bell. Those prices, apparently, remained stable until the 70s, when Taco Bell was no longer a fledgling fast food chain, but one worth a whopping $6 million, funding Universe Notes. A News Nation report notes that the chain jacked up the menu prices to 25 cents an item in the early 70s. That's still a lot cheaper than the $1.69 a crunchy taco cost as of August 2022, according to the chain's online menu. With $1.69, you could have bought all the menu items and then some at the first Taco Bell. According to an old Taco Bell promo, a customer could pick any five items from the menu for 99 cents at a certain location. On the nostalgic ad posted on the Facebook group, Taco Bell, please bring back the Bell Beefer, a user commented, Oklahoma City had sales like this. I was 16, driving my 1957 Chevy. Gas was 29 cents per gallon. Those were the good old days. If there's one beloved fast food restaurant that's got something for everyone, it's Taco Bell. So what did Taco Bell's menu look like the year you were born? Here's a look at how the popular fast restaurant's menu has changed over the years. When Taco Bell first opened in 1962, and for the first few years it was around, the menu was pretty limited. As with most fast food joints, Taco Bell didn't always have a menu that spanned several pages. But on their original menu, there weren't just tacos and burritos, believe it or not. The original Taco Bell menu featured six different food items, all of which cost just 19 cents. 19 cents? Uh-huh. Excuse me. Where are you going? I have to get my taco. Not only did the original Taco Bell sell the things you would expect, like tostadas, two kinds of burritos, frijoles, and tacos, it also featured one unique item. For just 19 cents back in 1962, you could get yourself a chili burger from Taco Bell. After the first Taco Bell opened and more and more franchises started popping up all over the country, the menu started to change. Prices gradually went up from that measly 19 cents, but for the most part, things remained pretty low-key. In 1970, Taco Bell introduced something called an Enchirito, and yes, it sounds pretty freaking delicious. The Enchirito was a burrito topped with cheese, red sauce, and three olives. Wait a minute! What's that? Oh, that is an Enchirito. Now that's got pinto beans, cheese on the top. While the Enchirito remained on the menu until 1993, it was definitely the most popular during the first few years after it was introduced. In 1975, Taco Bell attempted to prove that they didn't just serve tacos. In fact, one menu item launched in 1975 called the Bell Beefer looks like an interesting take on a taco. Yes, during the 1970s, Taco Bell served something called the Bell Beefer, which stuck around until the 1990s when it was discontinued like other Taco Bell items. Honestly, that's kind of sad because the Bell Beefer had a ton of potential. Think of it like a taco but in hamburger form. It was made with taco-seasoned beef, cheese, lettuce, and tomato sandwiched between two burger buns. Basically, the Bell Beefer was like a taco sloppy joe. For some reason, it just wasn't as popular as other Taco Bell items, and sadly is no longer around. Believe it or not, Taco Bell has been serving dessert options for quite some time. Yes, there are some popular modern-day options, but one of the oldest and most classic Taco Bell desserts actually came about a long time ago, although it wouldn't be surprising if the restaurant brought them back someday. Called Cinnamon Crispas, this Taco Bell item from 1980 was both satisfying and unique. The Cinnamon Crispas were basically cinnamon and sugar-dusted tortilla chips. Apparently, they were seriously loved by just about anyone who tried them. Sadly, the Cinnamon Crispas were discontinued and replaced with a similar menu item, the Cinnamon Twists. 
These days, when you think of Taco Bell, you probably don't think of chili. Sure, the chain restaurant offers spicy food and plenty of ground beef. But isn't chili a Wendy's menu staple, not Taco Bell's? However, in the early 1990s, it turns out that chili was all the rage at Taco Bell. In 1990, Taco Bell introduced the chili cheese burrito. The item was literally just chili and cheese wrapped in a warm flour tortilla, but fans loved it. Originally, the chili cheese burrito was on the low end of the cost spectrum at Taco Bell and was part of the 59.79.99 deal, which referred to the number of cents necessary to buy the meal. Sadly, Taco Bell ended the chili cheese burrito's run in the mid-90s, though fans weren't pleased with that decision. They were so vocal about their disappointment, in fact, that they convinced the chain restaurant to bring it back years later. Some Taco Bell locations even continued serving the chili cheese burrito for years after it was supposedly discontinued. Back in the days before social media blew up at the announcement of a new fast food item, places like Taco Bell could launch new menu items in a relatively subtle manner. In 1995, they did just that when they rolled out several new menu items that didn't exactly scream fast Mexican cuisine. In 1995, Taco Bell had made a public announcement that it was bringing three new menu items to Taco Bell's nationwide, all featuring one beloved ingredient bacon. Taco Bell launched a BLT soft taco, chicken club burrito, and bacon cheeseburger burrito. The newer items also made the menu look like it hailed from a Mexican-influenced deli. Whether or not said bacon items were actually good is up for debate, but they clearly didn't stick around for long, as a glance at the modern menu will tell you. If there was ever a need for a time machine, it would definitely be to go visit a Taco Bell in 1998. Seriously, the 1998 Taco Bell menu looked amazing, and for one good reason. For a few years in the late 1990s and early 2000s, it was all about the gordita. Viva gorditas! Taco Bell launched the gordita in 1998. The menu item was basically a flatbread-style taco reminiscent of an authentic Mexican gordita. As if that doesn't sound delicious enough, the menu featured three different gordita flavors — Supreme, Fiesta, and Santa Fe. Then, in 2001, they introduced the Cheesy Gordita Crunch, a gordita wrapped around a taco for the ultimate in cheesy and crunchy. Fortunately, the Cheesy Gordita Crunch is still available at Taco Bells across the United States. Back in 2003, Taco Bell gave the world what it really wanted with a new kind of burrito called the Spicy Chicken Burrito. It's true! It's the Spicy Chicken Burrito! At the time of the Spicy Chicken Burrito's launch, Taco Bell's chief marketing officer Greg Creed told Business Wire, "...with our new Spicy Chicken Burrito, we are offering burger board consumers another exciting choice and taste at a reasonable price." The burrito featured shredded chicken with plenty of spices, rice, and salsa all wrapped in a tortilla. Unfortunately, it was a limited menu item that only ran until October 12, 2003. If you've ever been to a Taco Bell, then you probably know that one of the fast food chain's signature beverages is the distinctive blue-green drink known as Mountain Dew Baja Blast. The drink is really only available at Taco Bell, making it extra special for restaurant-goers. The unique flavors of the beverage make it even more of a one-of-a-kind choice. As delicious as the Baja Blast is, it was only introduced at Taco Bell in 2004. Needless to say, the drink quickly became a popular addition to the menu. Perhaps Taco Bell's most popular item of all time is the Crunchwrap Supreme, a warm tortilla filled with beef, nacho cheese, lettuce, tomato, and a crunchy tostada shell? Um, heck yes! The Crunchwrap Supreme was introduced in 2005, becoming so popular amongst eaters that the chain restaurant made it a permanent menu item only a year later in January 2006. The Taco Bell menu from 2006 to 2012 was pretty standard, with only a few new inventions. However, one of those newbie menu items, the Volcano Taco, took the fast food world by storm. If you were born in that time period, the Taco Bell menu was probably pretty impressive thanks in large part to the Volcano Taco's widespread popularity. According to Mental Floss, Taco Bell launched the Volcano Taco between 2008 and 2009. The menu item was filled with distinctly spicy nacho cheese. As tasty as that sounds, it didn't stick around too long, as it was replaced by the Doritos Locos Taco, which remains one of the most popular items on Taco Bell's menu. 
For the most part, Taco Bell has stayed pretty close to its typical menu offerings of tacos, burritos, and other Mexican-style foods. But in 2013, Taco Bell finally offered two new and truly different menu items launched during the 2013 Super Bowl. According to Taco Bell's press release, the commercial spots first aired during the big game and featured the new Cantina Bell Steak Burrito and, for the first time at Taco Bell, churros. The Taco Bell Cantina Steak Burrito featured thick-cut, flavor-packed steak, rice, black beans, along with hefty toppings like lettuce, guacamole, pico de gallo, and salsa. Oh, and it was topped with a creamy cilantro sauce. Yes, that probably sounds familiar for any Chipotle fans out there. To Chipotle's relief, the Cantina Steak Burrito is no longer on the Taco Bell menu. Taco Bell finally decided to become an all-day restaurant in 2014 when they launched their breakfast menu. Yes, Taco Bell decided to serve up early morning breakfast to its patrons that year, making the menu pretty expansive. A Taco Bell breakfast isn't a foreign idea, as it has stuck around since its initial launch. However, there have been some changes. The original Taco Bell breakfast menu featured three main items, a waffle taco, the AM crunch wrap, and Cinnabon delights. Sadly, the waffle taco wasn't a huge hit and is no longer on the Taco Bell menu. The AM Crunch Wrap and Cinnabon Delights, however, are still on the Taco Bell breakfast menu, along with a variety of newer breakfast burritos. In 2013, Taco Bell introduced a new menu item that was almost like a delicious little handheld snack called the Stuffed Nacho. The item was pretty simple, consisting of beef, nacho cheese, tortilla strips, and sour cream wrapped in a flour tortilla and folded to look like a giant nacho chip. The item was super popular but was sadly taken off the menu in 2014. Fans of the stuffed nacho got to celebrate when Taco Bell brought back the delectable handheld snack in 2015, though the joy was short-lived as they discontinued it soon after. While the stuffed nacho didn't have a long run on the Taco Bell menu, it was definitely a big deal in 2015, and possibly the most popular menu item at the time. As if Taco Bell hadn't done enough to revolutionize fast food, the chain restaurant took things up a notch with their 2016 menu. That year, Taco Bell's menu featured a lot of tried and true items, plus the limited release edition of a new creation that was the talk of the town. Sure, Taco Bell had tried new things in the past, with plenty of failed experiments, but nothing quite like this new menu item on the block. In February 2016, Taco Bell launched the Quesalupa, which was basically a taco but with a hard shell filled with pepper jack cheese. It sounds simple, but it was a huge launch on Taco Bell's part. Specifically, Taco Bell spent a reported $5 million to announce the Quesalupa during a Super Bowl commercial. The Quesalupa is no longer on the Taco Bell menu, but in 2016, it was the central focus of the chain's offerings. For whatever reason, 2017 was the year that Taco Bell decided to forego taco shells or tortillas for some items and go totally naked. As scandalous as it sounds, in 2017, Taco Bell launched a few new menu items utilizing that word, including a naked chicken chalupa and a naked egg taco. The chalupa was basically lettuce, tomatoes, cheese, and sauce wrapped in a tortilla-shaped piece of fried chicken. The naked egg taco followed in the same vein. The breakfast menu item was basically a breakfast taco, but instead of having eggs in the tortilla, the egg was the tortilla. It was messy, strange, and overall just not good. Basically, everyone can agree that french fries are one of the most delicious foods in the world. Crispy, hot, salty, with the perfect amount of chewiness in the middle, french fries are the stuff dreams are made of. Add cheese to the equation and you've got yourself a winner. That's something Taco Bell discovered in 2018 when they gave the world nacho fries. In response, the world collectively freaked out. Specifically, Eater reports that Taco Bell sold 53 million orders of nacho fries in just three months. However, as popular as nacho fries were in 2018, they were only a limited time offering. While the chain brought them back in 2019 and 2020, their checkered past makes customers worry that the future of the nacho fry remains sadly uncertain. What could Taco Bell's crunchy tacos possibly have to do with the Mir space station crashing into the ocean? Keep watching to find out. Yo quiero Taco Bell. 
Even after purging over two dozen items from their menu, Taco Bell is known for an overwhelmingly large selection of food options. So it may come as a surprise that when the first Taco Bell opened back in 1962, there were only six items on the menu. Some of these items, such as the chili burger, are no longer offered. But others have stood the test of time, and the crunchy taco is one such item. What hasn't stood the test of time, though, is the price. At the original Downey, California location, crunchy tacos once sold for just 19 cents a piece. Considering that a crunchy taco is eight times more expensive in 2022, coming in at $1.59, it's difficult to imagine a time when a single quarter could get you a fresh taco, with change to spare. Still, Taco Bell is known for its value offerings, having run all sorts of meal deals and value menu promotions over the years, and the crunchy taco is among the most common freebies the chain loves to throw in. These days, tacos are a staple of the average American diet. As of 2020, there are at least 19 different Mexican restaurant chains operating in the United States. But decades before restaurants like Taco Bell and Chipotle became commonplace, tacos were unfamiliar to most American diners, so much so that Bell's first customers called them tacos rather than tacos. Of course, the incredible popularity of the original restaurant meant word spread fast about how to say taco correctly. And once people knew what tacos were and how to say the word, there was no stopping the public insatiable appetite for all things Taco Bell. Hello, I'm Young MC with a story to tell. I just got a free cup from Taco Bell. And MTV makes the whole thing fun. Buy a giant size Pepsi and you'll get one. Taco Bell is a beloved American institution, and while the menu has changed and grown substantially since the first restaurant opened, the most popular menu item has consistently remained the same, the Crunchy Taco. As recently as 2016, the Crunchy Taco was the fast food chain's number one seller, besting both the soft taco and the monumentally popular Doritos Loco taco. Perhaps it shouldn't be shocking, given the name and all, but a 60-year tenure is nothing to sneeze at. Taco Bell quite literally sells billions of tacos each year. While the fact that crunchy tacos are included with combo meals may boost the sales figures, there are other factors contributing to the crunchy taco's continued success. There's never a doubt about its availability, and the simplicity of its ingredients mean quality will remain consistent between trips to the Bell. One of the defining aspects of a fast food restaurant is the speed with which you're served, and Taco Bell has this down pat. While the restaurant's embrace of innovation and technology has certainly helped its overall efficiency, nothing is more responsible for Taco Bell's swift service than how quickly crew members can prepare the restaurant's most popular item. With proper training, an empty shell can become a fully assembled wrapped crunchy taco in under seven seconds, meaning that Taco Bell's 12-count taco party pack can be made to order without slowing down the drive through line. This quick and easy assembly has also enabled crunchy tacos to become the default side dish for practically every combo meal and special promotion on the menu. Menu, taking the place of french fries or tortilla chips at other restaurants. Believe it or not, the appeal of Taco Bell's crunchy tacos isn't limited to the phenomenally addictive taste. Science suggests it's also due to the texture of the taco shell itself. According to Dr. Charles Spence, a professor of experimental psychology at Oxford, the way a food feels in the mouth plays a large role in our perception of whether that food is good or bad. He told Epicurious that whether we like or dislike a food depends more on its texture than any other quality. This natural preference seems to be an instinct developed as the human species evolved. As a general rule of thumb for for our ancient ancestors, crisp and crunchy foods equaled fresh and edible ones. As a result, we tend to derive pleasure from both the sound and texture of crunchy foods. In fact, Dr. Spence believes that we actually perceive louder crunching foods as fresher and better tasting than softer crunching foods. While the precise reason for this remains unknown, there's no denying that the crunchy taco's popularity can be at least partially attributed to the shell's sound and feel. Shaq is suffering from taco neck syndrome, TNS. It's caused by his craving for delicious Taco Bell tacos. Though it's commonly added to Taco Bell combo meals as a side, the crunchy taco is closer to a cheeseburger entree than a side of fries like you'd get at other fast food joints. And while very few people would describe the crunchy taco as healthy compared to the actual health-conscious choices on offer, the bottom line is that it's far less nutritionally damaging than equivalent menu items from similar restaurants. According to Taco Bell, the crunchy taco has less fat and half as much sodium as burgers from McDonald's or Wendy's. The crunchy tacos also contain only about half as many calories as those burgers meaning you could eat two tacos and only consume a few more calories than if you thought inside the bun. Even compared to a traditional fast food side, the crunchy taco is healthier across the board than even small portions of french fries. And for their particularly health-conscious customers, Taco Bell offers a wide variety of healthy menu items and customization options, so everyone can live moss.
The crunchy taco is so close to perfect that even considering changing the recipe is cause for concern. There's no doubt that some efforts to improve on greatness have spectacularly backfired throughout history. We're looking at you, new Coke. But when Taco Bell did finally decide to introduce a new variant of crunchy taco, they knew they had a smash hit on their hands. Frankly, the Doritos Locos taco is the sort of creation that makes one marvel in appreciation. It's such a simple culinary mashup that it's hard to believe nobody else thought to do it first. It's just a normal crunchy taco, but instead of a plain old corn shell, Doritos Locos shells have been tossed in the same seasoning as the boldly flavored chips they're named after. The Doritos Locos taco was an instant success. Since its debut in 2012, the Doritos Locos taco has become a staple of the restaurant's menu. And it's not hard to understand why. The item was the chain's most successful product launch until 2018, when Nacho Fries claimed the title. The Doritos tacos were so successful that they even looped back around into their own Doritos chip flavor. Limited time varieties of the taco have come and gone, such as the Flame and Hot versions, but it's unlikely that the classic nacho cheese will ever leave the Bell's menu. Since 2012, 2 billion have been sold, which is 1 billion more than 1 billion. And that is what the Bell happened! Taco Bell is well known for its innovative approach to Mexican fast food, and with the crunchy taco existing as a sort of baseline for the rest of the restaurant's menu, it makes sense that it's been repurposed through the years to create some truly beloved items. The fan favorite, Cheesy Gordita Crunch, which is often ranked as one of the best-tasting Taco Bell menu items, would have never seen the light of day without the classic crunchy taco, which, by the way, is also available in Doritos Locos varieties. Taco Bell's creativity with the crunchy taco hasn't been limited to their menu either. The restaurant even released a recipe for a crunchy taco-filled shepherd's pie. The Crunchy Taco's continuous popularity has been a driving factor in Taco Bell's success and a crucial component of its marketing strategy. In 2022, the chain offered the Taco Lover's Pass, where a monthly subscription entitled customers to one taco per day for $10 a month. A great deal for Taco Bell aficionados, but also a clever marketing ploy to get the Crunchy Tacos into the minds and mouths of the public, even after the promotion was quietly retired just a few months later. But the Taco Lover's Pass was nothing compared to the brand's history of outlandish marketing stunts. From special edition game consoles to pop-up hotels, there's little the brand won't do to grab your attention. One of Taco Bell's most famous marketing stunts is to offer up free tacos to coincide with cultural events. Every year since 2007, Taco Bell has run a promotion during the World Series called Steal a Base, Steal a Taco, where the restaurant gives away free tacos if a player steals a base during the Fall Classic. But it wasn't the first time Taco Bell employed this strategy. This type of promotion has been a standard part of Taco Bell's advertising campaign since at least 2001, when the restaurant pulled a stunt that was truly out of this world. The Taco Bell target, if Mir lands on this 40 by 40 foot bullseye off the coast of Australia, the company has promised free tacos to every American. The Mir Space Station. When commissioned in 1986, it was the largest artificial satellite in Earth's orbit. But after Russian cosmonauts shifted their focus to the then new International Space Station, Mir was scheduled for deorbiting. In other words, it was to purposely crash into the Pacific Ocean. Hoping to capitalize off the nation's interest in the deorbiting space station, Taco Bell placed a 40 by 40 foot target in the Pacific Ocean, emblazoned with the words, free taco here. If Mir landed on the target, Taco Bell had promised a free taco to every single American. The odds of the space station actually hitting the target were extraordinarily low. The odds are about one in seven and a half billion. Bottom line? No taco. Bottom line? No taco. Though that didn't stop the company from taking out an enormous insurance policy, just in case. When you think of Taco Bell, you're probably not thinking about healthy eating. Sure, it's possible to have a light meal at the Bell, but those healthy options are not what we're here to talk about today. These are the absolute worst items you can order when you run for the border. Should you really eat any food with a name that starts with XXL? Probably not. With 870 calories per serving and half of those calories coming from fat, eating one of these big boys is about half the food you need in a day. But it also loads you up with about 90% of your daily sodium allowance. This oversized burrito is stuffed to maximum capacity with salty seasoned beef, way too much rice, guac, cheeses galore, avocado ranch sauce, and beans. For anyone looking to eat moderately, maintain a balanced diet, or not suffer a heart attack, we'd suggest steering clear of this monster burrito option. The beefy five-layer burrito is tempting. You're getting a lot of food for not a lot of moolah when you order this item. 
After all, it's two tortillas stuck together with a tasty filling of nacho cheese, then filled with seasoned beef, beans, sour cream, and even more cheese. That said, you're also getting 500 calories, a glob of saturated fat, and more than half of your daily allowance for sodium. So you might order this multi-layered burrito thinking you're getting a lot of bang for your buck, but you're actually also getting a heap of gross preservatives, fat, and salt you didn't ask for. Maybe the old saying is true after all. If it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Nachos, they're like a party for your mouth. Clocking in at 750 calories per serving, with nearly half of them derived from fat, Taco Bell's classic Nachos Bel Grande should give you pause. This meal's main components of seasoned beef, cheese sauce, chips, sour cream, and refried beans collectively contain way too many unpronounceable preservatives, modified additives, and ingredients with the word gum in them to feel good about. If you can get over how heavily processed it all is, you then have to wrap your head around consuming 1,310 grams of sodium, 85 grams of carbs, and 38 grams of fat. If you didn't pay attention in health class, those numbers are way too high. Why is Taco Bell's cheesy gordita crunch so bad for you? Well, first of all, it's actually two tacos masquerading as one. An unseemly amount of cheese is combined with the eatery's signature overly salty beef, fatty ranch sauce, and nutrient-free iceberg lettuce, then wrapped in a hard shell that's wrapped in doughy flatbread. Eat one of these gorditas and you'll have consumed a whopping 850 milligrams of sodium. If you're aiming to retain control of your blood pressure levels, stay far away from this menu item. In theory, ordering a 12-pack of Cinnabon Delights from Taco Bell sounds like a great idea. In a way, it is, until you start looking at the nutritional information. If you do snack your way through the whole thing, you're eating a whopping 930 calories, and 480 of those are from fat. There's also 59 grams of sugar in those 12 little balls of deliciousness, and there are 53 grams of fat, too. That's more bad stuff than what's in the XXL grilled stuffed burrito, and that includes fat. If you're splitting that order of Cinnabon Delights between four people, as the official serving size suggests, you're not doing too terrible. But who really does that? Just one of these giant breakfast burritos contains about your entire day's recommended sodium intake. The steak clocks in at the top with 1,480 milligrams of sodium. The bacon and the sausage come in at 1,470 milligrams and 1,310 milligrams, respectively. And that's still pretty horrible. Why? The American Heart Association says typical adults eat around 3,400 milligrams a day, but the ideal limit is around 1,500 milligrams. That's extra important for anyone who's keeping an eye on their blood pressure, and too much sodium leads to heart disease. So it's probably best to skip this massive breakfast treat, unless you plan on splitting it up into thirds and eating it over the course of an entire day. Or you could just stick to one soft breakfast taco and a small cup of coffee, so your run for the border doesn't turn into a run for the ER. What can a potential new Taco Bell employee expect when it comes to working for the fast food chain? And would you even want to? This is what it's really like to work at Taco Bell, straight from those who know best, the people that work there. Securing an entry-level job on the crew at Taco Bell isn't the most difficult thing in the world, which is probably why it's a popular place for a person's first job. There's also no need to pour over pages of internet job searches. Finding a job at Taco Bell is as easy as hitting up their website and plugging in your location. Chances are, the Taco Bell closest to you is hiring. One person on Indeed said that upon filling out their online location, they were immediately notified that they had been selected for an interview the following day. Landing an interview doesn't get much easier than that. As for the Taco Bell interview itself, well, let's just say it's not going to be a long and grueling process. The questions tend to range from asking prospective employees to tell a little about themselves to how they might handle certain job situations. Numerous people on Indeed described it as relatively short and even relaxing, with them being either hired on the spot or shortly thereafter. While nailing the Taco Bell job interview is a breeze, the demands of the job can, at times, be a little more challenging. With Taco Bell being fast food, fast is an aspect that factors into the job, and managers pay close attention to how quickly crew members are taking orders, assembling, and serving food. According to one employee on Reddit, when firing on all cylinders, their Taco Bell served around 100 to 200 customers in the drive-thru and 100 in the store per hour. In order to make these customer service numbers, employees are clocked on their speed per customer. 
Another employee on Reddit said that for an employee working the drive-thru, they were expected to take a customer's order and send them on their way in the span of 3 minutes and 30 seconds. The one thing that really throws off this Taco Bell speed clock is when a customer places a huge order of a bunch of small items. The employee said, I always feel bad for people who order like one item or just a drink and have to sit behind three cars with 70 plus items between them. So the next time you want 50 soft tacos, maybe consider cutting the Taco Bell employees a break and going inside. And a burrito supreme with no meat, is that correct? She's gone already, chief. Fast food jobs don't have a reputation for being especially high paying. And you won't get rich rolling burritos. According to Indeed, the average pay for a Taco Bell employee in a non-management position is around $10 per hour as of 2020. The good news is that Taco Bell does give raises as well as promotions. A former employee on Reddit explained that it all boiled down to putting solid effort into the job, saying, If you stand out, you'll get it. I worked at Taco Bell for 14 months, and I went from $8 to $13. Employees can also make a little more if they climb the ranks with shift managers, making an average around $12 an hour, and general managers making over $16 per hour. By and large, the determining factor on how much a person makes starting out at Taco Bell mostly depends on the rate set by the franchisee. Taco Bell makes this known on their online job applications, stating, Franchisees are independent business owners who set their own wage and benefit programs. Taco Bell employees seem to back up this statement, with some saying their franchise location had a policy of yearly raises. Others on Indeed said they were getting raises anywhere from every few months to, well, never. Store managers are the captains of the Taco Bell ship and are responsible for keeping order and making sure a particular restaurant is hitting sales goals. It's no doubt a tough job. And if you're tasked in charge of running a Taco Bell, you could probably expect to make around $47,000 a year. If you've got what it takes, however, and are working at the right Taco Bell, you could be making a whole lot more. In early 2020, Taco Bell announced that it would be paying some of its store managers a salary of $100,000 a year. Here's the catch. Remember how we mentioned that it's franchise owners who set the pay rates for their employees? Well, this six-figure salary only applies to corporate-owned Taco Bell restaurants, according to Fox Business. The big reason for paying some managers the six-figure salary is that Taco Bell wants to hold on to good talent, and nothing keeps people from looking for greener pastures quite like money. Over 90% of Taco Bells in the United States are owned by independent franchisees, so finding one willing to pay $100,000 could be tricky, but they are out there. Is working for Taco Bell's corporate offices in sunny Southern California like partying at a music festival? Probably not most days, but their corporate promo video sure would make you think so. According to The Muse, the Taco Bell offices are outfitted with foosball tables, and employees can opt for the standard desk or working on the couch in the Boom Boom Room. There's also an on-site gym, dry cleaning, and yes, a nail and hair salon. As for getting a job as a global marketing manager or digital analyst, it's going to be a little tougher than landing a job in the restaurant. Those that do work for Taco Bell's headquarters in California can enjoy on-site childcare, four weeks of paid vacation, and, of course, free Taco Bell. With those sort of perks, it's no surprise that it has a relatively high employee satisfaction rating on Glassdoor. Working at Taco Bell and having to serve inebriated customers is just part of the job, especially for any employee stuck working the late-night shift. And I'm ready! to party! Multiple Taco Bell employees have said that they had their fair share of interactions with some less than sober customers. One employee said on Reddit, high and or drunk people make up a solid percent of the people we serve. Another employee said that it wasn't uncommon for people to get in fights at the drive through lane or fall asleep before even picking up their orders. The worker explained, People would pass out in their cars at the order speaker, but we didn't go outside once the doors were locked for security reasons. So we just had to call the cops and wait. In U.S. states where marijuana has been legalized, working the graveyard shift seems like a whole different beast. One Taco Bell employee said that they had seen everything from a customer confusing them for KFC to a guy who regularly comes in and, quote, pays almost 30 bucks for a bag of 24 tortillas. As weird as some of the encounters may be, it's bound to make the night a little more interesting. One employee said, Surprisingly, or maybe not, stoned people make really good customers. They're mellow a lot of the time, and they become regulars more often than not. Once in a blue moon, a fast food company strikes gold with a certain menu item that catches fire with the public. And in no time flat, the brand is serving up its new item like gangbusters. In 2012, it was Taco Bell's moment to shine with the rollout of the Doritos Locos Tacos. Just like the fast food phenomenon of the Popeye's chicken sandwich in 2019, Taco Bell employees scrambled to keep up with the demand for the tacos. One former Taco Bell employee said on Twitter, I empathize with them Popeyes employees because I was working at Taco Bell when the Doritos Locos came out and whew, talk about tired. 
The new tacos were such a hit that Taco Bell hired 15,000 extra workers to help with the taco frenzy, according to Business Insider. Taco Bell pulled some of the Doritos Tacos versions in 2019, so at least that gives employees some relief from the Doritos Locos mania. In order to make sure that Taco Bell employees can keep up with the rotating menu and assemble food orders correctly, training videos are a regular part of the gig. One former employee and team trainer wrote on Quora, There is also a video every month that you will watch to learn about new items or review safety and current product builds. While one employee on Indeed did say that the training process is frequently ignored, employees are compensated at their regular hourly rate for watching whatever training video is assigned to them. As for what some of those training videos look like, well, they're a combination of live-action and low-budget-looking early 2000s animation. Some of the videos also include quiz portions. For example, with a video detailing how a Crunchwrap Supreme is made, employees have three choices for how long it's supposed to be on the grill. Answer incorrectly, and the animated Taco Bell trainer scolds you. Ouch! 45 seconds is way too long. This guest will probably be in shortly to complain. Try again. The rather simple list of ingredients that dominate the Taco Bell menu, compounded with the fact that it's fast food, could easily lead one to believe that microwaves and freezers are the only things in the kitchen area. But while the cooking at Taco Bell isn't gourmet, the employees are definitely involved in making your meal. One employee on Reddit revealed that they don't have a mixer. They whisk everything by hand. They added, We do everything. We fry everything, prep everything, make the food, no pre-making food either, make the drinks. Another employee went on to say that the beans aren't from a can, but are shipped dry, and Taco Bell employees boil the water for them each day. As for the ground beef, well, that's one thing that Taco Bell seems to have a unique way of cooking. One employee who worked there in the 90s said the meat prep actually turned them off from eating there. They explained, The one thing I distinctly recall was that the meat came in preformed tubes, and I had to run it over some sort of grater. It was beyond disgusting, watching it slice through. More recent employees noted that this process had changed, fortunately. While the preparation may be less than appetizing, a worker did state that they're 100% required to wear gloves on the line at all times, thankfully. Fast food can be tiring and hectic work, and if your coworkers aren't pulling their own weight, it only makes that job that much more exhausting. Reviews on job sites like Indeed are littered with both good and bad reviews of working at Taco Bell. And if there was one aspect that could make or break a person's job experience, it seems like it was the people they worked with. Several folks on Quora reiterated just how crucial the coworkers were for a good experience working at Taco Bell. One former employee admitted, "...coworkers can be great and show up every shift and do their jobs. Or they can call off frequently and not do much when they manage to show up." While one employee on Indeed said their managers were great, other former employees said they had a horrible experience and generally summed it up as being the result of bad managers and apathetic employees. Taco Bell's own corporate video culture paints the job as a fun and energetic environment, with employees citing their coworkers as being like a second family. There's an energy here that's just rad. If you're thinking about picking up a job at Taco Bell, perhaps scouting out a location first and paying attention to how the employees interact with one another wouldn't be a bad idea. Taco Bell can be found in over 30 countries, but you won't find it in Mexico, even though Mexican cuisine obviously inspired its menu. The fast food chain did try to set up shop there, but the effort quickly proved to be, well, disastrous. Here's why. When Taco Bell first tried to expand into Mexico in 1992, the chain started small. At the time, most U.S. stores were full-fledged, quick-service restaurants, complete with seating areas and drive through windows. Who could resist? Taco Bell's totally redesigned chicken enchilada. Tender marinated all-white meat chicken, slow-simmered enchilada sauce and melty cheese. But for its first location in Mexico City, Taco Bell decided to try something different. Rather than launching with a brick-and-mortar location, Taco Bell opened in Mexico City with a food cart, which could be found inside a Kentucky Fried Chicken location. The 9-foot-long buffet table sold a fairly standard Taco Bell menu, minus hard tacos. Around the same time, Taco Bell opened a few additional standalone locations in Mexico, but the concept never really resonated with locals. By 1994, every Taco Bell location in Mexico was shuttered. One of the major sticking points was the price of the food. Like they're saying, Taco Bell, what a meal, what a deal. No kidding. 
Tacos and a small beverage were being sold for the equivalent of about $3.25 in U.S. dollars. The problem is, the average street food meal in Mexico cost about half that price back in 1994. In 2007, Taco Bell made another critical error in pricing while trying to establish itself in Mexico yet again. The chain's restaurants set up shop in middle-class neighborhoods, trying to target Mexicans who had never traveled to the U.S. and had never tasted any of Taco Bell's offerings. But the plan missed the mark, and the restaurants never became popular. Of course, the food at Taco Bell isn't really Mexican food, and the names of their menu items reflect that. Have you ever seen a gordita or a chalupa on the menu at an authentic Mexican restaurant? We think not. When it came to the Mexican market, customers really didn't understand what they were even ordering. Psst. Yo quiero Taco Bell. One of the first things you think of when it comes to Taco Bell is probably hard shell tacos, but this item has no roots in actual Mexican cuisine. Hard shell tacos happen to be a distinctly American invention, so it's no surprise that Mexicans had no idea what they were. In an effort to combat the confusion, Taco Bell locations in Mexico rebranded the hard taco as the Taco Stata. This new name more accurately reflected what customers were getting, a cross between a traditional taco and a tostada. A real Mexican dish consisting of an open-faced fried corn tortilla piled with toppings. But Taco Bell still wasn't a hit in Mexico. Not at all. The use of frozen meat in the United States is pretty common, especially in the context of fast food and quick-service restaurants. But that's not necessarily the case in other parts of the world. In Mexico, street food vendors often use unique cuts of meat that are popular in specific areas and prepared in accordance with local recipes and customs. But the ground beef in an American taco isn't something you'll really find in Mexico. When Taco Bell locations launched in Mexico using frozen meat imported from the United States, locals didn't find it as appealing as the wide array of fresh meats they're used to getting from local street vendors. Though it goes without saying, Mexico isn't exactly hurting for a fast food version of one of its most popular local foods. According to the book Tortillas, A Cultural History, bringing Taco Bell to Mexico is like bringing ice to the Arctic. The brand's first location in Mexico lasted for less than two years, so they took a different approach when they tried again in 2007. The second time, Taco Bell embraced its uniquely American approach to vaguely Mexican menu items. Its slogan in Mexico was, Taco Bell is something else. The brand was betting on the fact that value and convenience would entice customers to choose Taco Bell over a more authentic alternative. It just didn't work like it did in America. Scott Montgomery, a creative officer who once worked on Taco Bell's advertising, certainly wasn't behind the concept. He told Ad Age, We're putting up a fence so they can't get through, but we're going to push tacos through the fence. It's offensive. In 2009, a Chicago Tribune writer quipped, To scarf down a Fiesta burrito in Mexico felt like patronizing a Panda Express at the foot of the Great Wall. When Taco Bell revamped its strategy for opening in Mexico in 2007, the chain leaned into its American heritage. In fact, long before nacho fries were introduced in the States, the chain sold French fries smothered in cheese, meat, tomatoes, and cream. The whole town was built on bold seasoning. But customers seem to find all of this even more off-putting than Taco Bell's first attempt to seem authentically Mexican. One customer even told an Associated Press reporter, something is lacking here. Maybe the food shouldn't come with french fries. Meanwhile, a lone Taco Bell imitator has found more success in Mexico than the chain. Across the border in Tijuana, you'll find a few Taco Bell locations that have absolutely no affiliation with the Yum! brand's owned restaurant. Even though Tijuana's local Taco Bell has no running water, tons of flies, and generally unsanitary conditions, the little restaurant has persevered and become a true local institution. Customers love the $1 beers, and it's hard to beat the price. $1 will get you three tacos. They also offer something that the Taco Bell can't. Authenticity. When it comes to tacos in Mexico, it seems like that's the most important ingredient. How does Taco Bell keep its prices so low, all while keeping its food so very crave-worthy? 
Well, there's actually more to it than meets the eye. Here's the real scoop on why Taco Bell's food is always so damn cheap. Not that we're complaining. One thing's for certain, a lot of people go absolutely bananas for Taco Bell. These are wrappers for the Doritos Locos Tacos. Many fast food aficionados are particularly enamored with Taco Bell's dollar menu, which is the stuff of legend among the Mexamelt slurping set. And no wonder, it offers plenty of delicious meals at especially low prices. But in December 2018, Taco Bell switched up its famous dollar menu and rebranded it as the Cravings Value Menu. As you can imagine, this move allowed Taco Bell to expand its offerings. That's ultimately a good thing for you because it means even more great deals on delicious food. For fast food fanatics, this is a bona fide game changer. Let's get to the big news this morning. Taco Bell's dollar menu is getting beefier. The value menu now has several different tiers, which means you can start out with something for a dollar and pile on a bunch of extras like guacamole and sour cream for a few cents each. Those ingredients all add up to a cheap, delicious, and filling meal, so no reason to panic about the change. The bottom line, the new menu is very similar to the dollar menu, only now it's better and even more dynamic. Taco Bell's beef isn't exactly 100% real beef. In fact, the chain only gets a B plus in the meat quality department. But thanks to a lawsuit that was resolved in April 2011, we now have a much clearer idea of what's really going into all that beef. Give me something big. What Get a, a bunch, bunch of beef. beef. It is not said cheesy double beef burrito. For starters, there's a handful of ingredients with big, long, super confusing names like these. The beef also includes several stabilizers, lactic acid, and artificial coloring. The beef's most surprising ingredient, cocoa powder, probably for the sake of coloring. So like we said, this most assuredly is not 100% beef. But then again, what did you expect? I'm pretty sure you, you know what you're paying for when you come to Taco Bell. If you want real beef, you probably go somewhere else. If you regularly read the nutrition facts on fast food menus, you probably know that franchises often save money by including filler ingredients. And Taco Bell is no different. Does that really surprise you? Mmm, I'm thinking about a neon orange meat-filled miracle taco wrapped in a nacho cheese Dorito shell. Need a clear example of these filler ingredients? A quick glance at Taco Bell's ingredient list reveals that the chain's eggs contain soybean oil, xanthan gum, and guar gum. Xanthan gum thickens and stabilizes the eggs, resulting in a creamy texture and a longer shelf life, which saves Taco Bell money in the long run by reducing food waste. Meanwhile, xanthan gum doesn't exactly make the food less healthy per se, but your body can't digest it. That means it provides no nutrients, but it does help keep the prices of Taco Bell's breakfast options down, such as they are. The next generation of breakfast is here. Introducing the Waffle Taco. Quick quiz. Have you ever met a Taco Bell employee as perky as this? If you need some help, just ask. It only works. Your answer just might be. Here's the unfortunate truth. Fast food is often cheap because the employees aren't paid particularly well. At all. As you probably know, fast food workers are often paid minimum wage or just above minimum wage. According to the website Payscale, Taco Bell salaries range from an average of $7.81 to $14.18 per hour. Kitchen workers generally earn just $8.50. The same site estimates that the average fast food worker salary is $8.85, which puts Taco Bell at a similar rate to most other fast food chains. One reason Taco Bell's food is so cheap is because the employees aren't making a whole lot of money by working there. Of course, that ultimately means more savings for customers, but it's got to be rather frustrating for employees. People buy fast food for a reason, and it's not just because they're lazy. In many cases, Taco Bell patrons are simply looking for a cheap and somewhat healthy way to feed their whole family on a budget, sometimes after working long hours or when they're just too damn busy to cook. Taco Bell definitely took this into account when conceiving its party packs which are designed for customers who want to feed multiple people with one super simple, super filling order. We all know Taco Bell has some killer deals on its food, with many delicious items only costing $1. Well, one reason those prices manage to stay low is presumably because Taco Bell's add-ons end up costing you extra in the long run. In fact, Taco Bell claims customers can choose from millions of menu combinations and modifications. Well, as you indulge in these endless choices, keep in mind that it's going to cost you. Spending 50 cents here and 50 cents there adds up pretty darn fast. Still, it's totally and completely worth it, right? Right. Whether it's filled with kimchi or combined with a chalupa or even made with Kit Kats, a quesadilla at Taco Bell has more to it than you might think. There's no shortage of places to grab a delicious quesadilla nowadays, and the food's ubiquitous presence is easy to understand. After all, a griddle cooked tortilla is an incredibly effective delivery method for whatever fillings you could want. There's no limit to what can be in a quesadilla, but the classics like cheese, chicken, and beef are classic for a reason. 
So, as of December 2022, Taco Bell's menu offers three standard quesadilla options to U.S. diners, chicken, steak, and cheese. Each standard Taco Bell quesadilla contains a three-cheese blend and creamy jalapeno sauce, so the only discernible difference between types is the protein. The lack of distinction between quesadillas isn't a bad thing, though, since it simplifies the process for restaurant staff, which helps customers get their food on time. Actually, some key differences do exist between Taco Bell's standard quesadillas, namely the cost. While the cheese-only quesadilla's lower price of $3.99 is expected, we were somewhat surprised to see the steak quesadilla cost 60 cents more than its chicken counterpart as of December 2022. Then again, since a 2022 beef shortage led to a 15% price increase for beef by September of that year, the reason behind the different quesadilla prices is no real mystery at all. Beef. It's what's for dinner. When something's existed for a relatively long time, it can be hard to remember what life was like before that thing came around. We certainly feel that one of those things is Taco Bell's quesadillas. Frankly, the now staple menu item is so ingrained in the fast food restaurant's identity that, from time to time, we still need to remind ourselves it wasn't on the original menu. Some Reddit users recalled the occasional limited time quesadilla promotion running in the 1990s, but that isn't quite accurate. Taco Bell didn't offer the griddle-cooked quesadilla nationwide until 2001, when it first advertised its then-new chicken quesadilla. Interestingly, for such a popular item, there's very little information available regarding the initial sale of Taco Bell's quesadillas. Sure, several commercials from 2001 announcing the chicken quesadilla's release can be found, like this one, along with follow-up commercials releasing soon after in following years. But beyond that, we came up largely empty-handed regarding the development of, and thought process behind, Taco Bell's quesadillas. Not that we necessarily need to know all the details surrounding Taco Bell's fateful decision. After all, it's clear the quesadilla won't be disappearing from the Taco Bell menu anytime soon. And two decades after it first appeared, that's really all that matters. We can't imagine many folks disagree with the idea that Taco Bell has taken its Think Outside the Bun slogan to heart. But the fast food restaurant's commitment to avoiding bun-based food items isn't the only way it seems to follow the wisdom in its catchphrase. After all, Taco Bell has a long history of thinking outside the box as well, and doing the unexpected when it comes to menu items. This includes introducing the Quesarito in June 2014, which combined a quesadilla and burrito into one mashed-up masterpiece. Now, if you've never had the unparalleled pleasure of eating a Taco Bell Quesarito, you can probably envision the experience. After all, a beef, rice, cheese, and sour cream-filled burrito is a delectable delight all on its own. But taking that burrito and wrapping it inside a quesadilla? It's like a gift straight from heaven. While we were sorely disappointed to discover the quesarito was removed from menus in 2020, the news wasn't all bad. Because while the item was taken off of menus at its actual restaurants, the quesarito remains available for purchase on Taco Bell's online exclusive menu as of December 2022. Yeah! Hey, come on, baby! Come on! Yes! Despite what some may believe, there's no real requirement when it comes to a quesadilla's filling, at least according to the Mexican Spanish Dictionary. Though many Americans likely assume that a quesadilla has to include some kind of cheese, since the name seemingly combines queso and tortilla, that isn't actually the case. In Mexico City, for example, the food is actually served sans cheese unless requested by the customer. Given this lack of restrictions, Taco Bell deciding to test a dessert quesadilla in select U.S. markets in 2017 is slightly less bizarre than it might sound. Their attempt, however, still might catch you a bit off guard. The Chocodilla, which is a quesadilla filled with Kit Kat bars. Now, we really do remember when Taco Bell tested the Chocodilla, which featured Kit Kat candy pieces and melted chocolate grilled inside a tortilla. But given its lack of longevity beyond its short test run, we assumed the Taco Bell dessert item was nothing more than a short-lived experiment. However, according to Taco Bell, the Chocodilla is still sold in seven different countries outside the U.S. as of 2022, including Guatemala, Costa Rica, and Spain. We suppose it's nice that the option to gorge yourself on a chocolatey, non-savory quesadilla still exists around the world. Then again, since we're struggling to wrap our minds and taste buds around the notion of melted candy inside a grilled tortilla, we're not exactly sprinting to grab our passports and try one.
Taco Bell has never seemed comfortable resting on the laurels of existing Mexican dishes. Sure, tacos, burritos, and quesadillas make up the core components of its menu, but the consistent addition of absurd items, which often seem like the work of a madman stitching together different foods, illustrates a clear ability to innovate. This includes several quasi-quesadilla creations introduced by the fast food chain, such as a smaller, shredded chicken quesadilla melt, which was just introduced in December of 2022. Now, the quesarito may be the best-known example, but it certainly wasn't Taco Bell's only attempt to combine its quesadilla with another menu item. In fact, the chain's taken multiple swings at creating quesadilla-like items through the years, and even publicly prioritized the improvement of its melted cheese when introducing the quesalupa in 2016. Like many other items, the quesalupa, a part quesadilla, part chalupa hybrid, has made intermittent appearances on the menu since its initial release. In that sense, maybe Taco Bell just can't stop itself from adding melted cheese and a grilled tortilla to its items, no matter how long that item may really end up surviving on the menu. You might not expect a restaurant known for its gut-busting options, like steak white-hot ranch fries, to offer many healthy options to consumers. But just because Taco Bell often embraces the less nutritious side of Mexican cuisine doesn't mean health-conscious diners should avoid the restaurant at all costs. After all, as shown by its fairly robust vegetarian menu, Taco Bell can be much healthier than you might think, at times. So while we wouldn't necessarily call Taco Bell's quesadillas healthy, its standard varieties aren't nearly as bad for your health as you'd expect from a fast food item. For starters, each standard Taco Bell quesadilla, which includes cheese, steak, and chicken, comes with a good amount of calcium, iron, and protein. Additionally, since its creamy jalapeno sauce is the likely culprit of the item's nutritional deficiencies, asking for light or no sauce can reduce the calorie and fat intake in Taco Bell's quesadillas even further. Now, we want to be clear that the standard Taco Bell quesadillas make for a somewhat healthier option, not just any sort of quesadilla hybrid item. And, according to CNN, the best option may actually be a smaller chicken quesadilla variety, rather than the full-sized thing. It's smaller, better. Let's tackle this together. To say taste preferences vary by country and culture isn't exactly a new thought. With that said, from an international brand's perspective, that knowledge is downright essential to long-term growth and sustainability. The decision makers at Taco Bell obviously understand this, which helps explain why different quesadilla options are offered in different countries. Of course, the presumed logic behind Taco Bell's decision not to offer some of its internationally sold quesadillas in the U.S. is easy to see. For example, the chocodilla we mentioned earlier didn't last in the U.S., but succeeded in other countries. When it comes to other items, though, we're a little less understanding. Take the pulled pork quesadilla available in the United Kingdom, for example. We love the sound of that item and abhor our inability to order it on this side of the pond. The same goes for the popular kimchi quesadilla in South Korea, which accounted for 10% of Taco Bell's total sales in the country in 2016. We're not entirely sure why corporate brands feel the need to try and be cool in the 21st century, but we blame social media. After all, we can't even begin to count the number of times we've witnessed a corporate social media account utterly embarrass itself by trying to seem like part of the young, cool crowd. How do you do, fellow kids? What? Then again, not all attempts to appeal to modern consumers are cringy, like Taco Bell offering quesadilla menu hacks on its website for customers to use, for example. Secret menu hacks have had a bit of a moment in recent years, so Taco Bell getting in on the action is no surprise. Now, if we're being honest, the fact that the chain only provides a couple of possible quesadilla hacks felt a bit underwhelming. But since both quesadilla hacks sound fantastic, we're not inclined to be too harsh towards the bell in this instance. Additionally, Taco Bell encourages customers to share their own personal quesadilla hacks with the restaurant on social media. Frankly, we can't help but salute Taco Bell's willingness to encourage customer customization and wish more companies would follow its lead. When Taco Bell decided to throw its hat into the fast food breakfast ring in 2014, we reacted with little more than a shrug. We don't mean to denigrate the Mexican chain's breakfast menu, of course. Rather, we simply figured it was about time such a large fast food company expanded to the early morning hours. Now, while its breakfast announcement was far from unexpected, its lack of a breakfast quesadilla option before 2017 was utterly jaw-dropping. Our apologies for the momentary hyperbole, but we still can't believe a breakfast quesadilla wasn't among the restaurant's initial AM offerings, given the food central place at Taco Bell. Of course, since Taco Bell now sells a folded-over tortilla filled with scrambled eggs, meat, and cheese, we might as well recover from the shock and move on. 
Somehow, the breakfast quesadilla still wasn't on Taco Bell's permanent menu when it was included in the $5 breakfast box. Luckily, there's now a standalone bacon breakfast quesadilla that has been on the menu since December 2022. Fingers crossed it stays that way. All right, fingers crossed. The rise of fake meat over the past 10 years has been fairly astonishing to witness. We're not complaining by any means, but if you told us in 2010 that a slew of convincing fake meat products would be available by the end of the decade, we can't say we would have believed you. Clearly though, fake meat isn't going anywhere, and Taco Bell is jumping on the trend. Taco Bell collaborated with Beyond Meat to release a steak quesadilla made with Beyond Steak in September 2022. Of course, as is often the case with these things, the Beyond Steak quesadilla was relegated to a limited time release specific to Dayton, Ohio for this initial run. So while us non-Ohio residents will have to wait our turn to sample the Beyond Steak at Taco Bell, we're willing to wait. Then again, since the new quesadilla reportedly hit all the expected flavor notes found in a regular steak quesadilla, we just might have to plan a road trip to Dayton ASAP. Double Duck, Fried Chicken Stuffed, and Wagyu Beef by the way of the office's BJ Novak, Taco Bell's Crunchwrap Supreme isn't just a fast food favorite anymore. Fast food history was forever changed in the summer of 2005 when Taco Bell first brought the Crunchwrap Supreme into the world. To say the new item was a hit is an understatement. Promoted with the tagline, Taco Bell classic taste made modern, these handheld delights were eaten up by customers, literally and figuratively, at an unprecedented level. It's Crunchwrap Supreme, all the classic Taco Bell taste grilled up, so it's good to go. According to Taco Bell, the Crunchwrap Supreme quickly became the chain's most successful product introduction ever. The fun was short-lived, however. Taco Bell released its newest creation as a limited-time offering, ending sales at the close of the summer. But the people had spoken, and Taco Bell listened. Just a few months later, in January of 2006, the Mexican food chain announced it was adding the Crunchwrap Supreme as a permanent menu item. Bill Pierce, the Taco Bell Corporation's chief marketing officer, said at the time, we have always been innovators in taste here at Taco Bell, while also creating breakthroughs in presentation and portability. Crunchwrap's combination of taste and convenience connected so strongly with our customers that there was an outpouring of support for us to bring it back. At the time of its elevation to permanent menu item status, the Crunchwrap Supreme cost just $1.89. Hearing the words Crunchwrap Supreme can elicit a Pavlovian drooling response for many of us. But would we have the same reaction to Mexagon? Because believe it or not, that was one of the many names Taco Bell considered before ultimately settling on the Crunchwrap moniker. Stephanie Perdue, Taco Bell's marketing director, told the Huffington Post, We had to choose what aspect of the dish we wanted to emphasize. What really stood out for us was the texture, the combination of a crunchy and soft shell. But the shape was also unusual. Who's ever eaten a hexagon? The end result of that brainstorm was Mexagon, a portmanteau of Mexico and hexagon. But that was far from the only name Taco Bell tried on for size for its newest menu item. Other potential monikers left on the cutting room floor included Crunch Witch, Crunchilada, and Origami Tostada. During testing, the chain's executives found the texture of the dish resonated more with customers than its shape. According to Purdue, consumers were really responding to Crunch Witch, but they told us, you're not about sandwiches, you're Mexican. So we changed the witch to wrap. And that, Taco Bell fans, is how the now iconic Crunchwrap Supreme name came to be. As beneficial as the Crunchwrap Supreme is to your taste buds, it may be equally as harmful to another part of your body, your waistline. The popular menu item has one of Taco Bell's least nutritious items. A single Crunchwrap Supreme has a whopping 540 calories, according to the Taco Bell Nutrition Guide. Only three other dishes in the specialties category have more, the Quesarito, Black Bean Quesarito, and Nachos Bel Grande. On top of the massive calorie count, the dish also comes packed with 21 grams of fat. That's roughly one-third of the recommended daily amount, based on a 2,000-calorie diet from the USDA. The Crunchwrap Supreme also has roughly 24% of your daily recommended intake of carbohydrates at 73 grams, and about 50% of your recommended sodium consumption at 1,210 milligrams. Those looking for a healthier take on the Crunchwrap won't find much in the vegetarian version. The Black Bean Crunchwrap Supreme comes with just 20 fewer calories, 3 fewer grams of fat, 110 fewer milligrams of sodium, and 4 additional grams of carbohydrates. Many would agree that the Crunchwrap Supreme tastes equally delicious in the morning as it does in the afternoon and evening. But if you find yourself craving something slightly more traditional for the first meal of the day, 
Taco Bell has you covered with breakfast versions of the irresistible meal. The Breakfast Crunch Bacon and Breakfast Crunch Sausage combine the handheld convenience of the Crunchwrap Supreme with the delectable flavors of a hot breakfast. Consisting of eggs, cheese, a full hash brown, and choice of meat, all wrapped in a warm flour tortilla, these menu items are Taco Bell's answer to the breakfast sandwich. They put their hash browns on the inside? Yeah, so they can keep a hand free, they can do that tweeter thing they do. But Taco Bell doesn't stop concocting new versions of the popular crunch wrap once the clock strikes noon. In the chain's vegetarian option, the seasoned beef is swapped out for black beans. Everything else remains the same. Taco Bell has never been a company to rest on its laurels. The chain is always in innovation mode, consistently coming up with bigger and better menu items. Both of those adjectives could be used to describe the Crunchwrap upgrade Taco Bell devised a few years ago. In 2016, the restaurant chain upped the ante by unveiling the Triple Double Crunchwrap. Take your Crunchwrap love to the next level, literally, with a whole new level of seasoned beef, nacho cheese sauce, and crunchy tostada. Along with its two layers of beef, this mammoth meal came with a layer of lettuce, tomato, and sour cream. The Triple Double Crunch Wrap wasn't a permanent menu item, but Taco Bell has re-released the offering several times over the past six years, most recently in 2021. It was during this last reintroduction that the Mexican chain unveiled a slightly less convoluted moniker, the Grande Crunch Wrap. That name change didn't seem to stick, though, as the menu item is currently referred to by its original title on Taco Bell's website. Just when customers thought the Crunchwrap couldn't get any more delicious, Taco Bell unveiled a cheesier version of the iconic dish with the help of an equally famous snack. In June 2022, the Mexican chain announced the arrival of the big Cheese It Crunchwrap Supreme. In this new Crunchwrap creation, the tostada shell is replaced by a giant Cheese It cracker. Liz Matthews, Taco Bell's chief food innovation officer, said in a statement, There are few things that everyone can agree on, but the iconic flavors from Taco Bell menu items and Cheese It snacks appeal to all. We're thrilled about this new concept with Cheez-It, which gives our fans the chance to experience the real cheese and crunch they love from both of our brands in a whole new way. The Kellogg Company, which produces Cheez-Its, was equally enthusiastic to show their product in a new light. Stephanie Miller, president of the Kellogg Company's Away From Home division, said, We're excited to incorporate Cheez-It, made with 100% real cheese, into Taco Bell favorites, and deliver customers a bold, cheesy twist on the iconic chain's go-to menu staples. Unfortunately for Crunchwrap and Cheez-It fans, the item was only sold for a limited time at one Taco Bell location in Irvine, California. According to the chain, both the Cheez-It Crunchwrap and Tostada were so popular that they sold out less than a week after hitting the menu. Menu hacks are all the rage these days, and the task of discovering them usually falls on the shoulders of intrepid, innovative diners. But not at Taco Bell. The Mexican food chain has come up with its own menu hacks for its customers to enjoy, including two ways to elevate the Crunchwrap Supreme. The first is the Chicken Bacon Ranch Crunchwrap. Getting your hands on this delectable creation requires little work just some ingredients swapping when you place your order. Simply order a Crunchwrap Supreme and replace the seasoned beef with chicken and the nacho cheese sauce with avocado ranch sauce. Then ask for the reduced fat sour cream to be removed and bacon added, and voila, a chicken bacon ranch Crunchwrap. The second menu hack, the Crunchwrap Pizza Supreme, takes a little more work and has to be done at home. Take your Crunchwrap Supreme back to your kitchen and assemble the following ingredients. 1 half cup of shredded cheese, sliced green bell peppers, sliced red onion, and sliced black olives. Spread the cheese across the top of the crunch wrap, then top it with the bell peppers, onion, and olives. Stick the dish in the oven for 10 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit and enjoy! The Crunch Wrap Supreme is such an ingenious dish, it has made its way onto high-end eateries menus across the country. Portland chef Gabriel Rucker used his French technique in Chinese ingredients to concoct a double duck Crunch Wrap Supreme. This handheld treat featured duck, XO sauce, Oregon Marion Berry, hoisin sauce, Japanese miso paste, ginger stewed black beans, sausage, and pickled coleslaw with ginger sauce. Rucker isn't the only Portland chef with a crunch wrap on their mind. The city has seen a number of high end versions appear on the menus recently. Burriaria PDX had a braised beef crunch wrap, Nacho offers fried chicken stuffed crunch wraps, while Cocktail Lounge Palomar has the Cuban sandwich inspired crunch wrap Cubanos. On the other side of the country, in Durham, North Carolina, you can grab yourself a Chicken Wrap Supremo from ex-photo Cocina Nixta Mall. This delectable creation includes roasted chicken, chipotle crema, pico de gallo, queso blanco, 
and pickled jalapeno slices, all enclosed in a flour tortilla and sealed with grilled hoop cheese. In the central time zone, Big Kid's sandwich shop in Chicago had a veg crunch wrap consisting of Vietnamese pickles, cilantro, jalapeno, Duke's mayo, tostada, and provolone cheese. Speaking of plant-based food, in Dallas, the food truck Vegan Vibrations makes a vegan crunch wrap featuring Beyond Meat, dairy-free chipotle sour cream, vegan cheddar, and mango pico de gallo. In November 2022, the digital restaurant chain Man vs. Fries announced that it was partnering with DJ Khaled on a remix of the classic Crunch Wrap. In this rendition, dubbed the Khaled Crunch, the tortilla is filled with chicken, cheese, and waffle fries and covered in a Cheetos dust coating. Bill Bonhorst, the founder of Man vs. Fries, told Eater it took nine tries to perfect his new take on the Crunch Wrap. But DJ Khaled isn't the only celebrity to put their famous name behind a new take on the Crunch Wrap. In July 2022, The Office star BJ Novak's pop-up restaurant chain unveiled an upscale version of the popular Taco Bell menu item. Named the Cruncho Perfecto, it featured premium Wagyu beef, cheddar queso, guajillo spiced black beans, and a house-made taco sauce. The dish was also pan-fried in order to achieve an extra level of crunch. So good was the Cruncho Perfecto, it drew praise from the Crunch Wrap's originators. Taco Bell chef Rene Pichotti told Food & Wine, Chef Tim Hollingsworth was on point, just left of center enough that it was his own spin on it. But ultimately, when you're eating this thing, you're like, this is a crunch wrap. It's a pretty magical thing that they've done. I like it a lot. It's clear and subtle at the same time. It's really good. You have a real talent for this stuff. We're all happy to suffer through long drive through lines if it means getting our hands on a delicious crunch wrap. But what if we didn't have to? Well, dreams do come true. You can now enjoy the delectable dish without ever leaving home. The geniuses at Taco Bell managed to stuff just about everything inside a crunch wrap that can fit into a handheld meal. With that in mind, you will need a fairly long list of ingredients to make your own. 15 to be precise. Fortunately, you probably already have most of these at home, like lettuce, tomato, sour cream, and seasonings. Once you're ready to get to work, your first step is preparing the beef. To do so, combine meat, oats, garlic powder, onion powder, chili powder, smoked paprika, cocoa powder, yes, cocoa powder, water, and cornstarch in a pan. Bring this to a boil, then simmer for three minutes. Once the beef is ready and other ingredients are prepped, it's time for the most important step, building your crunch wrap. To properly assemble a crunch wrap, add a spoonful of meat to the tostada, top with nacho cheese, and layer a burrito tortilla on top. Flip the whole thing over so the tortilla is on the bottom. Add the sour cream, lettuce, and tomato to the top side of the tostada. Then just fold up the tortilla to enclose the crunch wrap and dig in. 